Well, here we are at the reserve here for the 40K in a day, that's right. So come on out, see what you can take home out of 40K. And from what I'm telling, it's probably gonna be a larger price pool than that. Doing, Buddha? I'm doing great. Oh I'm my gosh. Hoping to break my bad luck run I've been on. Everybody says it's because of my beard, but I can't be my beard. Is it really a beard? Well, go team, I guess. Yeah, there you go. Go team. Well, go team. There you go, go team. <laughs> um, 40K in a day. We are at the reserve, 5105 Glendale Avenue. We're having fun. Come on down and join us. See you here. On the very first hand we play, I'm in the cutoff position, open for 300 with a seven of hearts, the button folds, and then the small blind puts out a raise to 1300. Now, ordinarily, this kind of raise would signal strength enough for both the big blind and me to bail out of the hand, but this is hand number one, and who wants to fold preflop on hand number one, especially when I have position? <laughs> Clearly not the small blind or I, so we both decide to complete, and we go three ways to the flop of 10, eight, queen, rainbow. Surprisingly, both the small blind and big blind check, and since I only have a backdoor flush at this point with my hand, I figured the pot is spicy enough, and I want to see if my hand can actually improve slightly better, so I decide to check as well. The turn, seven of diamonds, and you know, it's really hard to make a pair, even if it is bottom pair. Plus, we see the small blind check for a second time when our villain in the big blind he decides to lead out for about two-thirds the pot. Now he could be doing this with a naked queen or maybe since there were so many middling cards out there, he figures he's, his hand is favored here. Maybe he's got a seven, it's possible. Or he could have just been protecting his big blind. That's a thing you know. Still, I'm going absolutely nowhere because I think it's way too early to yes. find a cooler yes. here. Moreover, the original razor now checked twice, so I got to figure my position is going to take me through. Oh. Then I make a questionable call so I can reevaluate on the river. As for our original Razor, well, she makes a double check of her holdings, and I think at this point she might be just a tad bit worried about that queen out there, which makes me guess she's holding on to ace-king suited, tens, or jacks, and certainly she could have ace-queen, but what I know of this player, I get the funny feeling she knows her. she's behind at least one of us. Still, if she is behind, this river could win her the pot, so she decides to call as well. That's when Killer Kara puts out what I now know is my money card. It's the Ace of Diamonds. They both check and I make a confident bet of 10K. And our original racer, well, she let her hand go faster than the Roadrunner being chased by the Coyote. But our villain from Alabama, he defies the odds and makes the call as I announce my river two pair. That's when he turns over a worst Just turn two pair red. of That's Queen of Spades, Seven of Clubs. You must have thought I was bluffing a minute ago when you called with a seven. <laughs> a two pair? Two pair. <laughs> Maybe. 2600 is not a small bet over there. Maybe. <laughs> so we're going to jump ahead a few hands here, and our villain that we were in the hand with a moment ago, he's still sharing his thoughts about losing that hand when I sneak a peek at Jack Eight of Spades. I make another questionable raise to 400. My neighbor directly to my left, he makes the call, as does the button in both blinds. We now go five ways to a flop of four, five queen, couple of spades. Woohoo! That's a pretty one. Folds go around to the button when he makes a finger motion as if he wanted to check, but he said he was merely counting the chips in the middle. Okay, so he tosses out a bet of 1300. Both blinds fold. I make a smooth call with my pretty flush draw here and our neighbor to my left, he folds as well. We now go heads up out of position to one of the absolute best turn cards I can imagine. And since this card made me happier than my cat in a room full of laser pointers, <laughs> I decided to curb my enthusiasm and make a sneaky cheeky check to see if we could get the button to bite. And it worked. So the button tosses out a couple of orange 1K chips. I double check my whole cards, then make a tiny raise to 5K. Well, that seemed to perplex our button villain a bit. And now I can hear some of you questioning this move. River Rat, why raise here? Why not just smooth call the 2K and then go for it on the river? Well, friends, my in-game thoughts were to try and do the opposite of what most people expect, and it looks like this is working, as our villain seems to be running the place through his head and looks rather confused. <laughs> so after a moment or four, he slowly makes the fold, and I just think to myself, easy game. All right, so a quick hand breakdown. My neighbor here next to me, he's holding on to a pretty decent hand. We had one, two, three, four, five callers, uh, practically the whole table. The ace comes down on the flop, did it not? It did. It did. 
and uh, we had a couple other folks in, but guess who won? This guy next to me. Easy game. Lots of action early on as I'm on the button holding on to Jack Nine of Diamonds. Folds go around to our middle position player who puts in a small raise to 300 when the hijack oh, player um, must have found a couple of cards one. he truly likes. He tosses out 1200, so <laughs> with a three bet like this, I, I suspect he's sure to have nothing but premium holdings. Maybe ace king, ace queen suited, pretty much everything shown in dark green here. Still, I've got the button and momentum is on my side, so I make what's widely known as a speculative call. It's in the light green section. See it? Both blinds fold and our middle position player, he completes. We go three ways to a pretty favorable flop. It's four, six, seven, couple of diamonds. Wow, these flush draws are amazing. Our middle position player, he checks to our three better who tosses out 2,500. And with this flop, I'm certain he has a solid hand. Still, I don't think I can fold quite yet, especially with all the outs that await me. In position. So I call, and pretty much to the chagrin of our hydrack player, our middle position player comes along as well. We're still three ways going into the turn when Kara puts out the five of diamonds. Bingo! This time, our middle position villain leads for 5k. I'm not sure what that's about, given I just hit my not-so-hidden flush, and our hijack player, he's yet to let off the gas, so we both call. The river was a card that couldn't have helped anyone. Still, middle position continues his leading man roll and bets another 5k. Our hijack player finally waves the white flag and makes the fold whilst I make the okie doke call just slightly fearful of a higher flush. That's when our villainous player tables his eight of hearts, ten of diamonds for a turn straight. Then I deliver him the bad news with my lucky jack high flush. Can we change some of this light green to dark green now? All right, here we are on our first break, uh, 40K in a day. I'm sitting over 115,000, pretty good, pretty good first round. Got a pretty cool hand to tell you about. I have Ace King of Spades and the flop comes down six, four, four, two spades. Um, I had done some pre-flop raising around 1800, got three callers. And then on the flop, I go ahead uh, out of position uh, with the flush draw. I went ahead and uh, let out for 10K. We got one fold and then I had my villain. Uh, he went ahead and made the smooth call. The turn, it's my, it's my money card. It was the seven of spades. So this time I got a little cheeky and I checked. Uh, he goes all in, I snap call and we put him out of the tournament. Of course he makes a rebuy, comes on back to the table. So I guess I gotta take him out twice. Let's see how we do. Blinds are at 1500, 3000, 1500. I'm in the small blind looking down at ace nine offsuit and this hand sometimes is okay to play out of position. So when the folds go around to the cutoff and he raises to 6500, I gotta quickly decide how I'm gonna play this one out. So I make the call, as does the big blind, and we go three ways to a flop of King-7-7 seven, seven Rainbow. It's a paired flop, and that might just be the flop that I can exploit. We'll see. And so I check, as does the big blind, and the cutoff then leads out for 7K. That's when I decide to execute my planned bluff and raise our villain to 25,000. Mostly because our villain has a relatively large stack and seems to be protecting it. Obviously, I want to see if I can get away with one. Indeed, sir, this flop does favor my hand over yours, Mr. Big Blind. And I'm guessing you only made the call to protect your hand, which doesn't seem to match up with anything on the board, so fold! Haha! <laughs> one down, one to go. Now all that remains is our big stack villain, and he gives a moment of pause, then releases his hand as well. What a game! You bluff, you win! Sometimes. Blinds are now at 2,000, 4,000 with a $2,000 ante. I'm in the low jack position, holding on to the lovely ladies. Our under the gun player, he raises to 15,000, and fellas fold faster than oak leaves in the fall. Man, since we're inching ever closer to the money, I want to put an end to these shenanigans right away with this primo hand, and so I ask to see a stack. And since I pretty much have him covered, I decide to shove my stack of 135,000 straight into the middle in order to isolate him. Now this move seems to have caused some angst for our small blind as she looks at her holdings a few times and I think the way she's looking over things, my guess is she's holding on to either ace-queen, ace-jack, possibly a small to middling pocket pair. 
Whatever it is, she finally thinks better of a call and makes a reluctant foal. Now we're back to our under the gun player. He looks to the dealer and asks if I have him covered and once he realizes that I mean business here, he releases his hand as if to admit he really didn't have much anyway, which tells me I might have left some chips on his side of the table. Next time, my friend, next time. All right, we're going on our dinner break. They're getting ready to start the live stream, so, so ho hopefully uh, we'll be able to see you there in a little bit. This last round was pretty tough. I went card dead for literally two rounds. I ended up picking up ace eight, and um, I have to tell you, I got a bluff through. Actually, I've got a couple bluffs through. I'll show you right up here. done so already and you made it this far please hit that like and subscribe button it really helps the channel out a lot we've been having a whole lot of fun and let me tell you we've blown the doors off of today's tournament so let's see if we can keep running this up let's go blinds are now at 5k 10k with a 5k ante i'm first to act when i find the second best starting hand and hold them the cowboys and with several short stacks at the table, I want to make sure to entice at least one of them, so I make a sizable raise to 35k just to ensure that only quality hands will come along. This prompts my neighbor just to my left to shove his entire stack into the middle, and folds go all the way around back to me, so I feign a good luck all in, good luck all in to my neighbor and toss out some Colin chips just to see that we're up against pocket tens. And here's the run out in real time. Good playing with you. Yep, all right, a quick hand breakdown. I have pocket threes. I made a pretty substantial pre flop raise to about 16,000. I got uh, one, two callers, and the flop comes down. <laughs> I had nothing on it. I had to check, and I think we went to the turn. Did we go to the turn? I think we went to the turn. We went to the turn, and my gal down here, she goes all in. There's no way I can call. So, pocket threes. <laughs> For this hand, I've got the big blind, so I've already committed 30,000 in the middle. Folds go around to the short stack across the way who hasn't played a single hand since she arrived to the table. Well, she takes a look at what lies beneath and decides to push her remaining stack of 85,000 all in. The button folds and our small blind, he decides to smooth call for the additional 70,000 when I find ace jack off suit. Now ordinarily, this would be a fold and allow the small blind to battle it out with our all-in, thus preserving my chips for a better spot. But for some reason, I decided to shove my stack of roughly 230,000, forgetting the number one rule of bubble action, never gamble with aggressive players. So after teetering a bit with a fold or a call, he finally declares a what the hell call. And here's the live run out. Yep, what the hell has been announced. Here we go. Can I phone the second time? This looks familiar. We got Jags. We've seen this, this before. Really you seen that yet? <laughs> <laughs> Wake up to that. 
watch this little four. Oh no, four can't be here, but I'll take the side pot. Love babies. All right, we here? Yeah. Dog fishing, you need a lot of hooks. Love, that's good. Ooh, king. Oh, that's good. Oh, that's good. Oh, that's good. Kings and fours. Kings and fours. That'll do it for this week's episode, and we sure appreciate you sticking around. So come on back and find out who our next river rat will be. Who knows? It might just be you. And since you made it this far, hit that like and subscribe button. It's free, and it lets me know that you want even more poker shenanigans just like what we have over here. As always, play smart, play with hard, and always have fun. This is Marty, and you've been watching Reflections of a River Rat.